Leviticus 26 and 1, it reads as such. It says, ye shall make no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image. Mm. Neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Now, if you walk in my statutes, keep my commandments, and do them, then, everybody shout then. Then, then I will give you rain in due season. The land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach into the vintage, and the vintage shall reach into the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land. You shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Watch this. And five of you shall chase a hundred. Somebody say one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got five in here. Man, I think we got five times, 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 five. We about to chase some demons out of here. We about to chase some enemies out of here. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Woo! Five of you shall chase some hundred. And a hundred of you. We got a hundred. Mm, it's looking a little sketchy. Yeah? We getting close to a hundred. All right. Since a hundred, it's going to be a hundred by next week, right? Yeah. Ooh, look at your faith. I said it's going to be a hundred by next week, right? Yeah. And a hundred, you, you're almost at a hundred anyway. Ain't that much faith. And a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to what? To flight. Your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. You shall eat the old stuff and bring forth the old because you got so much new stuff. Still got tags on my old clothes. My God. I can't even wear my new clothes because all my old clothes, it was so much that I couldn't even wear it. I had these clothes for three years, but I got so much that even the new stuff I can't even get to because of all the old stuff that I got overflow with. Verse number 11 says, and I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of bondage. You that ye should not be their slaves anymore. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and you're free that you may go upright. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Want to use for a topic for the next few moments. No more barriers. No more bondage. No more burdens. I said there's no more barriers no more bondage and no more burdens oh come on put it in your spirit one more time say there's no more barriers come on put a little tone on your voice right there say no more bondage and no more burdens now praise God for it right about there Come on, you can be seated in the presence. But if you can't be seated, just keep on lifting up a praise. All right, we're almost finished. 
The lesson begins on today with instruction to eliminate barriers, okay? And here's the particular context of these barriers. God is not responsible for removing this particular barrier. Did you catch that? You are responsible for removing this barrier. And I know what the song says, and, and the scriptures confirm it, that God does move mountains. He calls his walls to fall. With his power, he does perform miracles. Uh, and there is nothing impossible because God is always making a way. That song is true. We're going to keep singing that song. But in the context of this particular passage, the barrier that needs to be removed is the barrier that you are responsible for removing. God will make a way. However, you need to be reminded that God operates in partnership. Everybody shout partnership. God operates in partnership with faith. Now, faith is the language that God speaks, and faith is your responsibility in the partnership that we have with God. It's true that, beloved, you have to understand this. Although you have heard it, you have to grasp it. Faith without works is dead. If you want a miracle to show up and show out in your life, you must at a minimum arrive at the battle. Sometimes, amen, there are battles in life that we're looking for God to give us victory with respect to, but we won't even show up. God is at least at a minimum asking you to have enough faith to show up in confrontation to the battle that you're facing. And I know we want the mirror to come, the miracle to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We want to call down fire from heaven. But God is saying, get up and confront the enemy by faith. And that's when I will begin to intervene on your behalf and I will perform the super, everybody catch it, the supernatural. See, you're asking God to do the supernatural, but you have to at least respond to the natural, which is to get up from where you are and to confront the thing that is trying to stop you and prevent you from walking in the grace that God has called you to have. Come on, shout amen. You, you got to arrive at the site of the battle. You have to activate your faith. Sometimes we declare that we have faith. We say we have faith because we show up to the prayer meeting. We say that we have faith because, yes, uh, uh, we prayed at night and in the morning. We came to church on Sunday, but we haven't activated our faith because it's during our time of prayer that God gives us instruction. Everybody shout instruction. Faith, amen, uh -huh, operates through the framework of your prayer because prayer is a conversation between you and God. And every time that there is a conversation between you and God, God, amen, when the connection is right, gives you insight, direction, and wisdom. So you have to activate your faith by being wise enough to actually follow God's commandments and be obedient to his commands. And oftentimes what God will give us instruction to do uh -huh, will cause us to really in our human logic kind of second guess what God is saying, what God is instructing us of. But God 
God is requiring us to move outside of our comfort zone and trust him for something outside of the framework of the box because it's outside of the box where our faith really becomes activated and to have any hope of a connection with God God is waiting on us to respond in faith come on and shout hallelujah Mm, uh, the Bible says it like this in Hebrews 11 and 6 it says without faith it is what impossible to please him and this particular passage of scripture confirms the fact that if you want God to do something in your life you have to bring your faith to the table in other words family it is impossible to have a relationship with God without you bringing some faith to the table for he who comes to God must believe everybody shall believe there must be a level of belief in your spirit that God is who he says he is and that as a as a matter of him being who he says he is that he's a rewarder of those that what diligently go after him what God is saying is that if you want a relationship with me you gotta trust me hallelujah and anybody in the room that knows anything about relationships you understand that every decent relationship is based on a level of trust we begin by developing relationships with our nuclear parents the persons that nursed us and take care of us we trust mother and father more than any other voice on the face of the earth in our formative years so when I get to kindergarten if the teacher tells me that the sky is green I trust my parents my mother my father told me that the sky was blue and this teacher is ignorant I don't care what they say because they trust the source of the information that they have received because the relationship that has been developed between the child and the parent testifies to the fact that whatever my parent says it is so that relationship of trust is built on the fact that, amen, that I have been there every step of your life I've walked with you, I've taken care of you, I've nurtured you I've been there to console you, I held you in the bosom of my arms I've been there with you every step of the way and anytime I see anybody outside of the framework of mother and father the first thing that comes to my mind as a six seven year old is stranger danger because I don't have a relationship because I don't trust them because there's never been a historical development that will cause me to come into a place where I trust trust them so God is saying to us in order to have this relationship your trust in me has to go to the next level somebody shout yes Lord amen it is faith that brings us to the next level in God it says in Romans 5 and 1 having been justified how by faith it's by faith we are justified uh, it says we have access by how by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God so our faith becomes absolutely necessary and that's what the enemy wants to come for he wants to attack your faith to move you out of right relationship with God John 3 and 16 says it like this it says whosoever what believe in him it's your faith family that brings you into relationship whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have what 
everlasting life. So you have to have enough faith to eliminate the barriers because you are responsible for removing these barriers that we see in the text. In Leviticus 26 it says in verse number one you shall have no idols no graven image neither shall you rear up a standing image neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it why because I am the Lord your God somebody say yes Lord the people of God here are commanded not to make idols or sacred stones or images for the purposes of worship. To do so was to remove God from proper perspective. You shall worship the Lord your God for he alone was the one that was responsible for bringing you out of bondage. He alone is the one that is worthy. So idol worship was the thing that God wanted to give people instruction and insight about as it pertains to the barriers that needed to be removed from their life so they can live life without burden. Idol worship is still as prominent today as it was in the days of Moses. We still have an issue with idol worship. And here's what idol worship is. It's mismanagement of priorities. Mm -hmm. Here's what idol worship is. It's misplaced faith. It's determining that God is inferior to anything. Whether it be a person, a place, a thing, a circumstance, or a situation. Anytime you place anything above God, it moves you into a place called idol worship. Uh -huh. We're in the political season. And we're looking for a new president. And, and, and the president is a big deal because... Uh, the president of, of the United States of America is commonly referred to as the most powerful person on the face of the earth. Amen. So, so, so it seems like uh, that this, this, this person is in a position of power. When we look at our nation that we live in, when we look at America, America is commonly referred to as the most powerful nation on earth so even the nation that we live in is considered to be a big deal because it's considered to be so powerful uh, scientifically water is considered the most essential thing on earth I'm going somewhere with this uh -huh. uh, uh, little Kim said it like this that money power and respect is the key to life uh, Y'all don't know little Kim. All right, that was during my time. <laughs> but she was under the premise uh, and a premonition that money, power, and respect was the key to life. Uh, and, and here's the big one. Death has been feared as the most fearful circumstance on earth. But what God wants his people to know that if you look at either one of these things in the wrong way, you are falling into idol worship because the truth of the matter is that God is bigger than all of these things and what God wants you to do is to put your faith in him alone somebody shout hallelujah so I gotta have a reason to trust in him oftentimes because also I hear the preacher saying God is bigger than it all it feels like these other things in my life are so pressing. They're so big. They're, they're so significant. But I want to let you know that, that although the president may be a big deal, one comes up and then another comes down. 
And the same one that goes up it will be the same one that eventually comes down. America, yeah, America is a big deal. But I want to remind you, family, that there have been other world powers that have existed before America. And they have come, and now they are gone. Uh -huh. The British Empire was before the American Empire. And, and that empire was about 400 years. The French Empire was before the British Empire. And that empire was about 200 years. The Spanish Empire was before the French Empire and that empire was about 300 years. Uh -huh. And the American Empire, it took place after World War II. And you know when that happened? 1945. It's been 80 years. Mm -hmm. It ain't that big, family. And we think we're so powerful. But the truth of the matter is that there have been others that was more powerful than America. And God lifted one up and pulled another down. So you can't get caught up in America is this, that, and the third. Because every empire is subject to fall. Somebody shout, help us, Lord. Uh -huh. Even the TV series Empire, that didn't last but five years, wasn't much of an empire at all. Y'all can't smile, can't laugh. Beloved, here's the point. The president, America, water, money, power, respect, none of these things can save you. Because all of these things, they come and they go. Oh my God. And even when it comes to the most fierce things, even the most feared thing, the grave. Mm. The Bible lets us know that God has power over even the grave. So what we see is the president can't save us because the president can't even save himself. The grave is coming for him. America can't save you. Because America, uh -huh, she got her expiration date as well. Nature can't save you. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Uh -huh, and you can't save yourself. So, uh -huh, so we got to put our faith in the right place. So, so, so the point that I'm trying to illustrate and draw on today is that if you are misplacing your priorities and you're misplacing your your faith and you're misplacing your confidence that will end in failure there is nothing on the face of the earth that has the power to rescue you so either you can walk around totally hopeless or you can put your faith in God and God alone glory to his name God gives us beloved of God a place to place our faith Psalm 75 says that promotion comes neither from the east or the west or from the south but God everybody shout but God but God is the judge Psalms 95 says it like this it says in his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him the sea is his for he made it his hands form the dry land and Colossians the first chapter wraps it all up it says in him all things were created things in heaven and things on the earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities uh, everybody shall all things uh, all things have been created through him and for him uh, for in him all things consist he is before all things and in him all things are held together uh, so I want you to know on today it doesn't matter what you're wrestling with on today uh, God is bigger than that thing uh, it doesn't matter what the trial is what the mountain is uh, what the problem is 
God is bigger than that thing. God wants you to know on today because you showed up in the house that God will not fail. And that's the point of the message. He won't fail. I'll put my faith in Jesus because he can never let me down. He's been faithful through the generations. Why would he fail now? I want somebody to listening on today the low on today that he won't fail because there is no failure in God you need to stop relying on all of these other sources God is the only salvation in this world he is above all in all and through all I need you to know on today it's time for you to shake it off it's time for you to stop worshiping that thing that's causing you to stay in bondage to stay burdened because God is bigger I said God is bigger now here's the danger with idol worship idol worship is fertile ground for anxiety depression fear and ultimately failure the reason why we have an anxiety crisis, the reason why we are so depressed, the reason why we are walking in so much fear, the reason why we're going from failure to failure is because we have worshipped the wrong God. A God that was no God at all. Now, they are trying to persuade you. I said they. They being the worldly forces. That the root cause for anxiety, depression, fear, and failure, they're trying to persuade you that it's biological or psychological, maybe environmental, maybe it's physical, maybe it's cultural. But it's one of those things. But as I've studied the word of God and his words being revealed to me, the root cause is none of those things. The root cause for anxiety, depression, fear, failure, shame, bitterness, all of these things, unforgiveness, the root cause is cognitive. That's a fancy word, sir. Uh huh. It's what's in your mind. People idolize or worship their pain, their problems, their past, their perspective. All they do is look at it and worship. Oh, my pain. Oh, my pain. Oh, my problems. I bow down. I worship. I give you the glory. Oh, my past. I glorify my past. This happened on yesterday. Oh, my truth. My perspective. They worship all of these things. They can't let it go. And that's worship. You holding on to your pain. You holding on to your past. You holding on to your pressure. You holding on to your problems. And here it is. When you focus on it, that's worship. That's worth because that's what real worship is. When you worship God, you're focusing on Him. Worship is not just singing a song and lifting up your hands and tears coming down your eyes. Now, I do all of those things and you should too. But worship is focusing on that thing because the thing that's causing me to lift my hands, the thing that's causing the tears to come out of my eyes, the things that's causing me to sing my song is because I'm focused on Jesus. And when you focus on your pain, when you focus on your past, when you focus on your problems, you start singing songs about your past, about your problems, about your pain, all of your fears, and tears start coming down your eyes. And anxiety grips you, and fear grips you, and pressure grips you and depression grips you because you're an idol worshiper. Woo. You're worshiping that thing. It's right here. 
But the scriptures instructs us that these idols have no more power over you. Now, I need everybody to shout, no more power over me. We didn't come to play. We came to get free on today. I said we came to get free. No more barriers. No more burdens. It's time for us to get released. And here's where the release is. The release is right here in the mind. The Bible gives us instruction. Write this down. Philippians 4 and 8. Think on these things. Didn't I tell you worship was focused? Finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any worship, think on these things. You better be a real worshiper. We coming out today because the devil didn't trapped us uh, for far too long. We haven't recognized uh, what has been happening to us uh, for all of these years. Uh, all of these years uh, we've been in idol worship and we did not know. But God is getting ready to send a release uh, in the household of faith. And everything in the house is getting ready to be free. <laughs> Glory. It's here what a man thinks in his heart. So we see Proverbs 23 and 7, write it down. What a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's worship. Now, family, I want to let you go, but I feel like shouting right about here. Psalms 121 and verse number one is how you place your focus. And when you start to worship and focus and think, they're all synonymous. Worship, focus, my thoughts. They, they, they all correlate with one another. When we all come into agreement, well, what are we worshiping? What are we focusing on? What are our thoughts laid on? Psalms 121 and 1, the, the psalmist said it like this. He says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence my help cometh. Hallelujah. For my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He will keep me and will not slumber. Behold, he has kept his chosen people and he shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Did you hear that right here? Said the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me. Come on, y'all preach with me. Say the Lord shall preserve me. I said preach with me. Say the Lord shall preserve me. Come on, everybody in the house. Uh, that was about 50%. Uh, say the Lord shall preserve me. Uh, yeah, God. Uh, from all evil, uh, he shall preserve my soul. Uh, the Lord shall preserve my going out uh, and my coming in uh, from this time forth, uh, even forevermore. Uh, because I put my focus, uh, because I put my faith, uh, because I put my prayer. 
days because I put my worship in the most high God. God is getting ready to send a release all over my life. I feel like preaching right about here. You're getting ready to come out. It's time for the idol worship to drop every idol, drop every weight, drop every pain, drop every pressure. Bring it to the altar. It's at the altar where you lay it out. Gotta burn up your sacrifice you better come to the altar with a sacrifice a sacrifice of praise I bring everything that gotta be burned up to the altar I gotta let it go because God is trying to bring me to a place of fresh release that's getting ready to be a harvest in my life but I gotta learn how to worship God. Shout yes, Lord. We are standing all over the house. Shout hallelujah. Burn your idols watch me watch me family burn your idols burn them burnt offering put it on the altar say God you're a consuming fire burn it away Woo! Woo! Burn it away. I was in trouble. I said I was in trouble. You didn't know I was in trouble. I was in trouble. Had an anointing on my life. Got gifting on my life. Got power on my life. But I had some things that need to be burned up. God said, give me that marriage. Put that thing on the altar. Let me set it on fire. What's going to come out is that I'm going to consume it. I'm going to be a refiner. I'm going to make all things new. I was in trouble. I was worried about my children. God said, come on, give, give me them children. Give me Abigail, Naomi, Judah, and Mina. Yeah. You, you, you thought it was going to be in this place. I'm going to put you in a strange place. I got another altar that you know nothing of. You're an idol worshiper. Woo! that thing on the altar set it on fire was scared 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 terrified I'm the pastor I'm the pastor I gotta be here I got the Holy Ghost and fire ain't nobody got no fire but me the devil lies Got that Elijah thought process. Ain't nobody saved but me. <laughs> you need to take your position and put it on the altar. Right. Yeah. Set it on fire. I've been gone for weeks. Let me tell you something. Been gone for weeks. Setting stuff on fire. Woo! My mama was setting it on fire. I'm, I'm telling you, just get close. Just get close because everything connected to me is about to go. I mean, just go straight through this roof. Every plateau is getting ready to be broken. 
Every barrier is getting ready to be knocked down. Every bondage is getting ready to be released. Every burden you getting ready to be free from. Because what God has done for me, he's the same God that'll do it for you. All you got to do is follow me as I follow Christ. And we're getting ready to have whole victory. Burn your idols, even your sneaky ones. Even the sneaky idols, you got some sneaky ones. You know what a sneaky idol is, we got to go. I'm getting ready to go. You got some sneaky idols. Family is a sneaky idol. Career is a sneaky idol. Money is a sneaky idol. Position and power is a sneaky idol. I'm the man of this house. Ooh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you gotta announce it, it's a problem. Woo! My God. I never heard my father have to announce to his house that I'm the man, of, it was obvious. I'm the pastor of this church. If you got to announce it, we might have some problems. Because whatever you are, your gift will make room for you. You don't need to make no announcements. You just beat the person that God has ordained and called you to be. I thought y'all wanted the Holy Ghost. I thought we was going to get the Holy Ghost right here. I thought everything in the house would be filled by now. You want me to touch you. You making me an idol. You want me to lay hands on you and put oil on you, making the oil in my hand an idol. No, 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 no. All you need is God. Now, don't take what I'm saying out of context. You supposed to have a family. You're supposed to have a career. You're supposed to have money. You're supposed to have power and position. You're supposed to have all of these things. You're supposed to lay hands. You're supposed to anoint with oil. But we have to understand that God is above it all. And what God is saying to the house, don't unconsciously worship a false god. Because sometimes the enemy is so clever, we don't even know that we're worshiping a false god. But in all reality, we are. A god that won't save, a god that won't heal, a god that won't thrill, a God that won't feel, and here's the big one, a God that will not deliver. Deliverance needs to sweep through this house. Who needs deliverance? I need deliverance. Jesus. God is saying, if you lay your focus on me, you got to stop magnifying your problems, your pain, and your past. And you need to magnify me, for I am the Lord your God. And if you magnify me, I will open up the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out a blessing. Everybody shout, no more barriers. No more bondage. No more burdens. Everything you touch is going to work. Go back and listen to the sermon. I know you can't write it down right now. Receive these words from the Lord. God gave this to me for those that has ears to hear. Everything you touch 
is going to work. That's number one. This is not a prosperity gospel. This is not, you, 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 you can't dumb it down unto that. This is consistent with the word of the Lord. When I say everything that you touch is going to work, it's in the context of the kingdom. Every kingdom assignment that God has called you to is going to work. Number two, abundance is going to be everywhere and no demon will be able to touch you. Go back and listen to the sermon, write it down. Abundance everywhere. No demon will be able to touch you. Here's the third thing that God gave me. Write it down. Go back and listen to the sermon. No weapon, no person, no circumstance. Nothing will be able to stand against you. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Here's another thing that God gave me. He says, I believe in favoritism. Favoritism is going to hit your life. You're afraid to say that because you're waiting for the next bad thing to happen to you. And I'm telling you, as a man thinks in his heart, so shall it be. I said that those that has an ear to hear, as you drop your idols, God will send favoritism into your life. Jobs that you don't qualify for positions that you don't have the tenure for finances coming from places unexpected I said favor favor it's going to hit your life hands are lifted all over the house as we're closing in prayer father we love you we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, no more barriers, no more bondage, no more burdens. We surrender everything into your hands. Father, that hand that is left, lifted, bless my brother, bless my sister, supply every one of their needs according to your riches, which is in glory. Father, we say yes to your will. We keep your commandments. We understand that if we keep your commandments, that the best is beyond our imagination. So we submit this prayer in faith and we say now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above even the things that we ask or think according to the power of God that's an operation on the inside of us. We thank you for it, God. We give you glory for it. Let the people of God that have faith on today say it with me. Say in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands right there. Give God praise.